I'm Jen, this is Remembered Reads, and this is an announcement video for March Mystery Madness 2018. March Mystery Madness is a month-long readathon that encourages people to read mysteries, suspense, thriller, crime, and related genres for the month of March. March Mystery Madness was created a few years ago by Elizabeth from Lizzie Fay Loves Books and Troy from Troy Tal, and this year they've expanded to a whole host of hosts. <laughs> But there are about 20 people taking part as hosts this year, and I will link the whole group below. I had a lot of fun being a participant last year, and so when Elizabeth asked me if I wanted to join in as a host, I of course said yes, because I thought it was great fun, and depending on people's taste, you really do see a variety of material that people are reading for this. It is not just the thrillers and the whodunits that I think a lot of people imagine when they say that they love mystery or hate mystery. I think there's a lot more out there that hopefully we're going to be talking about. The challenges this year took their inspiration from the challenges that were used during Nonfiction November, and they're a series of single word prompts. And I'm going to uh, encourage everybody to check out the March Mystery Madness Goodreads group because the challenges were posted in the style of the accusations in the board game Clue, which are spectacular, so you should definitely check that out. So let's take a look at the prompts. One prompt is new, and with all of these you can interpret it a lot of different ways. It could be a series that's new to you, it could be an author who's a brand new author, or new to mysteries, or a new subgenre any of those things. It could be a new format. Maybe you read cozy mysteries and you've never read a noir. Maybe you read a lot of thrillers and you've never read a proper whodunit. Maybe you read exclusively novels and you've never read any comics format mysteries. You could branch out. Word number two is borrowed. That could be easily something that you borrowed from someone else. Maybe it's even just an idea that you borrowed from someone else. Or the obvious, you borrowed it from the library. Or it could be one of those cozy mysteries where the theme is people borrowing things. Prompt number three is foreign. That could mean a book that's set in a country other than your own. For example, Charles Todd's Best Crawford Mysteries tend to be set in France, although some of them are set in the UK. Mehmet Murat Sommer's series The Turkish Delight Mysteries are set in Istanbul. Ed Brubaker's crime series are usually set in the U.S. Depending on where you are and what you usually read, any of those three could be foreign for you. Or maybe you have a goal to read more books in some other language, and that could fit there too. Um, the next prompt is shelf. Now the easiest way to do that is to pull a book off of your shelf, but it could be your friend's shelf, it could be your virtual Goodreads shelf, it could be your virtual overdrive bookshelf, or it could just be the shelf at your neighbor's house where you steal something. Don't steal. Although that would fit for borrowed as well. The next prompt is opposite, and that could mean that you read two things in opposing genres. For example, you could read a really graphic thriller and then a really fluffy cozy mystery, and those would be great opposites. Alternatively, you could just read something that's the opposite style. Do you only read authors from a certain country? Something else would be the opposite. Do you only read Miss Marple? Maybe you could read something that's Nancy Drew, since they're opposite ends of the age spectrum in that case. Lots of ways you could go with that. The final prompt is historical. So, read a classic that's set in a period in history. Read something that, uh, and I mean, obviously the easiest reading for that is a historical mystery, and there are lots of those, but you could interpret that in a whole different way. Maybe you have a history with a certain author, and you're going to get over that by picking a book this way. Wait, there are a lot of ways we could look at that. So I think there's a fun set of prompts, and this should be a fun readathon. You're not required to only read mysteries in March, although I know some people do, and that would be a fun challenge. I think last year I read one non-mystery throughout the entire month. Well, March Mystery Madness is going on, I'm going to put in some updates every week, and I think I'll pop in a suggestions or TBR video before it starts as well. So if you're already planning to take part, I'd love to hear if you've been saving books for this. If this is your first if this is your first time taking part, I'd love to hear if you're interested, and if you're not interested and you think you hate mysteries, I'd love to know why you think you hate mysteries. Because I know a lot of people say that they don't like whodunits, but then there are also other subgenres of suspense or thriller that they might like, or vice versa. So, yeah, 
tell me about your mystery reading experiences. That's it for now. Ciao. Actually, before I go, this afternoon I was at the Friends of the Houston Public Library warehouse doing some sorting, and I came across a box of mysteries to be sorted. So let me share that with you.